Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we have another server here on the table I've gotten this one for free this was a evaluation server some company wanted to um, well they were looking at security solutions and um, this company FireEye um, they had some endpoint security that they wanted to sell and they delivered an evaluation server to this company and I guess they didn't pick it because well now the server is um, available for me to look at I asked on Twitter what the heck this was I had an idea that this was really a super micro server but as I have never had a super micro server before well it's like the condoms um, you don't really want something that's super micro and you don't really want anything that's Microsoft but in this case we're gonna be using both kind of the reason why no condom companies has ever used those two names <laughs> super micro but never mind this video is brought to you by bargainhardware.co.uk Bargain Hardware is a good place to go and buy your new server they have fantastic shipping rates compared to what I can present from my little stupid shop tiny shop um, it's cost an arm and a leg to shop anything out of here at Bargain Hardware they will ship you a server for way less which is kind of irritating but you get a way better price and if you add Bargain Hardware check out with the checkout code my playhouse small letters all the way you get 5% off of all of your purchases doesn't include VAT shipping and customs I guess but of the actual price on the products so yeah go check out bargainhardware.co.uk in the UK so moving on super micro server 1U let's have a look at it it has a nice front even though it's probably just a super micro server down beneath inside so yeah moving on oh I forgot I asked on Twitter if anyone knew if this was a super micro server and uh, yeah the 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 response was that this was most likely a super micro server um, mostly people could see that these disk trays were super micro um, I am I have to take their word for it because I have no idea super micro is not my thing but well there is disk trays in here and they stuffed a tiny little SAS drive in there you can see that it's a SAS drive because there is no spacing between the power and the, the data connection on that thing whereas a SATA connector would have spacing between there so and they put it upside down all the bytes will fall out but, um, ah come on yeah did I put it in wrong I put it in wrong there Yeah, these are 600 gigabyte SAS drives. I had it out just to check what they what they put in there. Okay, there it is. Nice. And they had this really nice aluminium that's welded on that handle there. That's kind of cool. With brushed aluminium front that they put on top of whatever you can probably just remove that and see what's inside and it's probably something standard and they have put on a nice pretty cool display here that advertises the system when you uh, turn it on so yeah nothing much on the front on the back it looks like this two power supplies we have ps2 connections i think it's the management connection we have a couple of usb connections we have a serial port, we have the VGA connection, then we have two LAN connection, Ethernet, Ether1 and Ether2. And then there is a special network card in here as well, a 4 port, 1 gig something. Let's have that out later. Let's check these power supplies. Hmm. They look familiar, it looks like something out of a Lenovo server, maybe a model 2 or 3. So how much are we dealing with? 750 watts. 
and it says super micro right there on the power supply you blind bastard yeah I should have seen that <coughs> okay um, let's just say that this is most definitely a super micro server then so my first super micro server just to be clear on that so okay that was kind of one new server it has some rack mounting stuff I didn't get the rest so yeah, so I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that know way more though about super micro servers than me because I know diddly squat so uh, yeah um, Do go into the comments and tell me all the stuff that I didn't know about this super micro server It's an AMD server. It has an AMD CPU an Optron so it's not a newer server. It must be somewhat old actually it says 2000 down here. I hope it's not that old, but yeah, it's it's kind of an older server. Um, I wanted to have this network card out, and also they have put a rate controller in here. There is only those two hard drives, which they have they have also put hot glue on the on the connections down here. So this is kind of funny, funny slash weird. Oh, there is something we can look at here. How does that work? Okay, there is a plastic thing key. Yeah, we can get that out of the way. So, okay, we have the power distribution from the two power supplies comes out to this power distribution thing key and goes over to the system board. This is not very nicely done. It's kind of uh, iffy. Uh, cables like that why and system board with connections why uh, probably it's a well you can replace the system board that's of course very nice of them but you can't replace it with anything too special because well if you want to use these riser this slot over here for the riser cards well you're kind of limited to a few system boards but I guess maybe you can use you can exchange the system board from one super micro system to another super micro system so maybe if this optron processor is not really what you wanted you could go and purchase an intel based motherboard or maybe change to the next generation of an intel or atom motherboard and then it would fit yeah but i do not like this way of doing it that's kind of Scruffy looking, scruffy looking goat herder. Ah, ah, ah. It's not that enterprise. Okay, hot pluggable fans, I presume. Well, with cables, yeah. Mm. It's. I will probably say that this is built on a price point. I would probably say that this is kind of cheaply built. Funny thing is that the backplane up here is ready for four drives. You could actually put four drives in here, but they have put that display in the front here. So these two bays are not really in use. You could kind of still pop in a, um, if, if you could put take the display off and you could kind of pop the drives in and you could most likely just hot glue them to the bottom and they would be in there fine kind of a weird build so but it comes with um, room for two CPUs what socket is this socket G34 G thank you uh, four slots of memory these are oh I actually don't know how big these are these are Kingston memory um, and Kingston haven't gone out of their way to put any size on these I'm guessing four gigabytes but um, yeah we'll see when we when we turn on the server, what we are dealing with. It only has one CPU. As I remember, it's the Optron 6134. Uh, we will have a look at that when it boots, if I remember correctly. I wanna get rid of this uh, network card. I'm going to install Microsoft Server 2019 on here, it's the hope. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want that network card in there. Okay. I see that there's a screw on the back as I have never taken out anything from a super micro server we are removing oh there is ah okay that's cute 
that's that's okay like that let's have this card out it's a interface master I am sure this is was bloody expensive at some point interesting let's see the rate controller down here they have put in an extra rate controller instead of just having the rate controller on the it kind of have a lot of SATA ports up here and well it actually has a DOM it, most likely it boots on this DOM and then the rate controller here which looks like to be a regular LSI rate controller it looks very much like an IBM M5015 but only with one port instead of two ports I'm sure it's a good one it looks fine let's put that back in it's um, two PCI Express X8 ports that are in here and the cables that are not in use goes back here they could go up to um, two additional hard drives up there that would be nice so let's put this back in put that screw back and, and we have this network card out it's something about that it's able to redirect input ports to different stuff there is a bunch of relays here that can change where the connection goes kind of cool in some way hmm. and there's five fans up here one is missing i'm guessing that when you put in the last cpu you also put in that extra fan up there to uh, give that extra cooling also all the ram for the second cpu is of course also missing let's have this plastic thing on top again this is flimsy as heck I have never this is yeah that could be better so let's power this up and um, I just checked that network card I wanted to see if it's that was something special and expensive and it's not it's about $80 on eBay so um, more expensive than a normal one but not that expensive but it's kind of a special thing I don't want it in the server because I'm not going to be using the server as any kind of endpoint security I'm most likely just going to be messing around with this doing a speed test and see how fast it is and uh, yeah more or less it's a big router okay let's turn on the beast about itself okay and 2.3 gigahertz upfront processor LSI controller two Toshiba hard drives in there I thought that we'll, we'll just let it boot for this time before we reinstall anything. Just yeah. boots a little bit of Linux. I don't know if the, I don't know if it's gonna be complaining about that network card missing. It might. And this is where I get to. It's a bit noisy, so I'm yelling on top of it. Um, but I do not have the password for this and uh, I couldn't care less I am not into this kind of security stuff it uh, does do some nice things down here on the display it shows um, knows it shows stuff like host name star 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 IP address doesn't show anything I'm guessing that it's on DHCP uptime so that's kind of cool that it shows how long it has been uh, operating so I could kind of see a use for that but I think I'll try and see if I can enter the BIOS on it okay someone has password protected the BIOS oh what could that be nope okay I need to see if I can reset that on the system board okay down here on the system board we have this little label where it tells us about this AMI bias 
and on top of that it says IPI to C PWR password reset I'm guessing and over here we have I, th I think it might be that one uh, I'm not entirely sure which one yet I'll check that okay you can totally discount what I just said it had nothing to do with that thing down there all those jumpers up there it seemed or it turns out I found the manual the the model number of the system board is right there H8DGU and uh, well that's um, it's a system board from the manual is from 2014 I haven't turned off power yet I have a little metal screwdriver here because down here there there is two pads down there and you have to short circuit those two but first we have to disconnect power which um, yeah, will disconnect power here and they suggest to take off the BIOS battery you just want to have that stop blinking there we are and we'll take this one out okay I need both hands I have a fantastic view of that that thing is just in the way isn't it uh, but uh, let's just have the BIOS battery out of here that little thing so that that doesn't interfere with anything awesome and the idea is that's why I took this metal screwdriver uh, I short circuit those two pads here and I turn on the system with them short circuited so um, yeah we'll get a good connection there and then we'll power on I have no idea how long it has to be powered on there I'm guessing that it's um, it's clear now. Do you have a good view of that anyway? Uh, short circuiting something. It's not often we do that. That must be enough. Let's hope. Oh fuck! I was so sure that I had killed it. Um, you're not supposed to turn it on when you're short circuiting that thing. It says it very clearly in the manual. Don't turn it on. What did I do? I turned it on and everything was completely dead. I think I've had this on and off five, six times and battery out, battery in and well, I was ready to throw this out the garbage. Well, I was actually more or less ready to take it apart and sell the pieces and then suddenly it boots up and um, I have no idea if that's... And that's of course happy because I don't have to... I didn't fuck up nearly as bad, but I was this close to killing my first super micro server in the first video. That would be a record, but right now it actually um, turned on and I got into the BIOS and, and it thinks that the year is 2012, so we need to fix that. And there are some other BIOS settings that probably um, has been cleared, but we got into the BIOS, even though um, I fucked up. So we need to put some time in here. We need to do some time. Twenty twenty. Oh, it's a weird. One. Okay, time and date has been set. I'm gonna go through and see if there's anything more interesting. We can see the processor down here, and it sees twelve gigabytes of RAM. That I, that's kind of weird. How many blocks was in this? There's four blocks of memory. Hmm. So we might have a memory block that is not working correctly. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll check that. Okay, I did the config, the network configuration of the. Um, well, it's not the IMM. It's the IPMI. So um, yeah. So remote management for the server I've never tried this might be interesting I'm not sure it's completely healthy anymore it um, it takes a while booting and if I don't do anything it doesn't boot but if I pop out the hard drives and leave them out for a little bit and push them back in well it kind of boots and uh, yeah that is weird as heck if you already have a super micro you might as well want it to be Microsoft. 
So um, let's put in Microsoft Server 2019. That joke got really old really fast. So ran into a bit of problems because um, the server only has two USB ports and one of them I was using for the keyboard and mouse or actually two of them. So I hadn't got any free ones for my little USB stick here. So um, I had to change to a PS2 keyboard. Could also have just changed the mouse, but well, it just happened to be the keyboard that I picked. So let's save changes and exit and see if we can pick a boot device. So, so we kind of want to go and see if we can. I would like to go into the LSI adapter here and see if we can configure those hot drives if that is possible for us to end up in there it looks exactly like it does on a lenovo server so um, yeah we should be able to figure this out nothing yeah that's a little bit um, weird where did the drives go this front that they have put on here it's not that great. I want some drives. Okay, I hadn't gotten the drives in. That's embarrassing. Now they are blinking. Okay. Fortunately, this is hot plug. Oh, we got two new drives. Foreign configuration, non configured, good. Okay, scan device. And here we can clear that configuration. That one. Clear that. Yes, so now we are clearing the configuration and now they're unconfigured good and not part of an array. So now we should be able to use the configuration wizard and make a new configuration. There. Next. Yes. Manual, redundancy if possible. Yeah, we're gonna make a RAID 1. Pick that one. Pick that one. Accept this group. Next. Add to spam. Here we can use the whole size of it and accept. Yes. So now we have made a virtual disk zero. Good. Next. Uh, oh, why does it keep save? Yes, save. And we do not have any SSDs, so never mind that. Yes. So now we're deleting those two drives. There, did that. And we can go home and we should get our new drives over here. We have our new virtual drive zero, 558 gigabytes. Awesome, that is up and running. Exit, yes. Reboot system, please reboot system. Oh, that means that I have to do it. Oh, and it found the USB stick, so it's booting from the USB stick. Awesome. And server 2019, not that interesting. So I'm just gonna click next, next, finish here. Well, interesting if it finds any drives we can install on. Standard desktop experience, next. Accept, next. Install, oh. We can install on the RAID controller or we can install on that apparently 32 gigabytes of DOM that's in there. That little thing that sits in the SATA connection. It's a tiny little SSD. Um, we can try that. See if that works for us. It's, I don't know if it's too small. It could be too small. Let's play it safe. We don't want to do this twice. Are you sure? Yes, yes. 
we'll let this run. I got server 2019 installed, no problems whatsoever. I even took the time to um, install the Windows updates on it and I have um, run a bit of a speed test here and it's nothing to write home about so let's see that um, I was really only interested in the CPU here and it scored in, in PC market it scored just below 3900 3891 um, okay my slow laptop is about that fast so it's, it's not a big deal over here I uh, have some different information on the CPU um, 110.7 watt TDP 45 nanometer chip right now running 800 and well about 800 megahertz so AMD Optron 64 bits thank you so yeah I did also um, connect the management interface we could just go check that I, I stole the network connection for it and I put it in the management port only have one cable running to that server so you get a little bit of information here system <sighs> not a lot of information it tells you something here and it tells you the exact same thing down here so it's like it's the same thing it's kind of weird so that's what on the lats fan server health Oh, it calls server health again, so that menu point is empty. And sensor reading, we actually do get some good sensor readings here. There's kind of a lot of sensor readings. So, um, yeah, there is sensor readings. Thank you. Event log, it complains about some physical security. I probably had the cover off, but and then again, it says the wrong date. Um, so I don't know if it knows the right date. It should know the right date in the BIOS. Did I put that in wrong? I might have. Never mind. So um, yeah, that's about system health. Then there's configuration. We can configure our loads. Some networking. Yeah, we can give it a host name. That would help us a little bit. And um, this is kind of the same thing that I put up in the BIOS, except the DNS that wasn't in the BIOS so extra thing then we could configure SMTP in yeah uh, we can put in some SSL certificate if we think that's amusing that was all of the configuration then there is remote control um, so you can remote control this server from outside and yeah you can launch remote control there and it pops up down there can you see that yeah it's it's a java file that you can then launch and it opens java and it wants to continue and do you want to run yeah run it and oh it didn't do that one before but um yeah it fails so um awesome not that great then there is some power control there and you can turn on and off and a little bit not a great deal the management interface is branded by FireEye so the company that has made this security thing well they put their logo in here I don't know if this is all the features you normally get but I am not overwhelmed but I was actually gonna try and figure out why it's only seeing 12 gigabytes of memory so I think we should try and shut it down um, and do it nicely and see if it it does it nicely I have my doubt okay I was wrong it actually shut it down really nicely and quick I tried to record it but I messed that one up okay let's check that RAM again I think we should just try and pop them up and pop them in again. Maybe remove power before we do that. Might be okay. There. So let's pop them out one by one. And pop them back in. I am really doubtful 
but these are three gigabyte blocks. And I forgot to put that plastic thing in. Looked up the rate controller over here and it's the same rate controller as the IBM M5014. Uh, except this one only has um, a connection for four hard drives, whereas the normal one in the IBM system has eight. Um, well, it has two connections, and each of those two connections usually holds four hard drives. It, it only has half the amount of hard drives. Okay, that worked. Um, now it sees 16 gigabytes, so probably one of those blocks, maybe the one I had up. I hadn't popped that in correctly, but uh, yeah, now we have 16 gigabytes in the server. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to be using this server for because, well, I'm not overwhelmed. I'm kind of used to there being more features. I don't know if this FireEye has features cut off because of security reasons. Uh, the display here is also still saying FireEye and the uh, management thinky same thing you just saw that they have their logo and there they could have disabled features in there that they didn't want people to mess with would not be unreasonable to do that first super micro server that i have had a look at so um yeah what do i think well the build quality is is not as good as i'm used to some of it is okay Definitely, I like the feature where you uh, you remove that piece of metal to get to the PCI Express cards. I actually enjoyed that. Plastic is flimsy. The cables for the power is iffy. Um, this front that they put on here from this company makes it really difficult to get the hard drives in and out. And that messed with me quite a lot. Please uh, do leave in the comments below what your thoughts are about super micro servers and if I'm wrong here and maybe you know that oh there is a lot of more features there they have just disabled it you have to firmware whatever um, leave that in the comments below and do also read the comments below there are way smarter guys down there than me I'm the one that messes up when I just want to clear the password Actually, um, the password to get into the management thing uh, was the default super micro one, uh, big admin admin. So uh, yeah, that took a bit of fiddling around with as well to actually get in there. Especially when you're greeted with that FireEye logo. That was where I went searching for the password. So um, apparently I had gotten that reset uh, when I reset the, the rest of it. So yeah. What should I tell you to do today? Um, go follow me on Twitter. I posted a picture of this server on Twitter over a week ago that uh, I got it. So, well, if you uh, wanted to know that, follow me on Twitter. So, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye-bye.